This piece will be for my upcoming creator own book called Neo Wonderland. I've had this story in the back of my mind for over 18 years. I'd say it's even closer to 20. Um, and I felt like now was a good time to actually start working on this because I was doing Lola for quite some time and uh, you know I felt like this story was going to be hopefully my best work or that I've learned enough throughout the years to go ahead and put this together now. And because this book or this concept has been sitting in the back of my mind for that long, um, I didn't know exactly how I was going to execute it because I have experimented quite a bit with, um, you know, Copic markers, watercolors, traditional, digital. So I guess where I should start is how it was supposed to be done a long time ago or how I planned on doing it. As always, you know, back in the day, uh, the early days of, I guess, Photoshop and digital coloring, the book was going to be done, you know, on paper, and then I was going to color it in Photoshop. Then I got really into doing lines in Photoshop, so at one point it was going to be digital lines and digital colors. It was just going to be, you know, a book that I could just do really easily. But then after putting it on the shelves for a few years and then doing Lola, I don't know if I could just go back to just doing digital pages for something that I feel like is my baby and I've wanted to tell this story for so long. So I started experimenting and I, I love manga and the look and feel of the book, the line art itself at least, is very manga and anime inspired in a way. Um, even the concept which is cyberpunk kind of takes from a lot of the stuff that I was influenced by in early days like Ghost in the Shell and, um, you know, Blade Runner and stuff like that, which is very, it's very Neo Tokyo and Akira. So I decided I was just going to do it in black and white and inks. And um, then I realized, you know, I could only go so far with that and learning all the stuff I learned with color. And because it's a, you know, cyberpunk book, it's very colorful. If you were to do everything in color, it'd be neon pink and blue and stuff so I figured why not just add color to this but I knew that trying to do this with Copic markers with the crazy colorful backgrounds and like the lights and stuff like that it would be really really hard to do it with um, Copic markers not to mention the kind of ink I'm using right now isn't necessarily bleed proof you know Copic proof I kind of switch between different inks right now I'm mainly using the Sumi, uh, Sumi ink, which is, um, let's see, it's a, a Kiritake black ink, 60, Zig cartoony ink, which should be okay with Copics. However, I just, I think I wanted to just kind of focus more on the black and white line art aspect of it, and the color was supposed to be something that kind of enhanced the look of the book without overpowering, and I didn't want to over-render the faces too much you know like with Copics everything seems like it's very tight this one I wanted it to kind of you know the color not be the focal point of the book it was mostly going to be the line art and the dynamics of the ink the ink washes and the the speed lines and stuff so I actually started to experiment with the um you know the Bombay color inks which I think turned out okay at first but I'm not it's kind of in between ink and watercolors so there is like this translucency that goes with it and you can layer it's really cool but since I've not used it enough I'm still trying to figure out you know how much ink to put down and how to blend it because it does dry fast and once it dries that's it it's permanent which is what I like about it and I like the fact that it's not there's not a whole lot of granular texture with this ink, which is the look I'm going for. It's pretty, it looks like watercolor slash Copic. So it's like this medium that kind of, kind of, kind of balance itself out in between all the, the elements I like with the other mediums. Um, I don't know if you could see on my desk, but I have a Sergio Topi book. Finally, I got that. I love his watercolor or ink washes. So that was inspiring for me. And that's kind of what I'm using as my base for how to color this book. And there are some splash 
images of Akira that I loved the way that looked. So I'm trying to merge all these things that I'm learning, but leaving out much of the Copic marker stuff because I don't think I'm going to need that for this book or hopefully, hopefully I won't need that. And just using like jelly rolls and uh, gouache, white gouache and white color pencil to go ahead and en enhance and do the lighting that way, you know, so hopefully that works out. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm looking at doing. This is, since this is a whole new book, I want to get like a, another look going for it as well. And this story is near and dear to me. It's about two brothers basically um, that get into a lot of trouble. They were separated for years and I don't want to get into too much detail, but it kind of goes over the way that this landscape works in the future, this country that they're from. Um, and it's a very, it's a very different kind of country. It's it's man-made more or less. It's kind of a metropolis of sorts, and um, there's a lot of goings on. And it's very uh, there's no there's no real laws per se, or their laws are very lax. And then it kind of illustrates the world around them outside of this island itself or this country island island country. I mean. That's kind of where my starting point is. I had this idea for this island years ago, and you know, it's kind of just, it's very dystopian, of course, dystopian cyberpunk. A um, lot of lot of different things with technology, and you know how we as people kind of evolved or devolved and made it a part of us in a way, which is a lot of a lot of themes that go with um, cyberpunk in the first place. It's not super unique in that sense, but I think that. Um, by taking what I've learned through the years and um, just as I grow, you know, as a person um, in my older age, I feel like I have a little bit of knowledge and insight, hopefully, that will be gleaned on with this book. I love to create dystopian stories because I feel like it reveals our humanity and kind of I like to observe I like to kind of figure out how we tick and just kind of making lay bare basically what we are and um, just to focus on that I think will help us maybe hopefully kind kind of come up with some solutions to the problems that we have and um, come together as individuals you know and 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 as a people because we often overlook that I mean it's okay to work as a team and also as individuals and and recognize that we're all very special and all very different this is one of my first uh, pieces using this kind of ink so hopefully I'm, I'm gonna do a few more before I actually start working on the interior pages I've already started um, scripting out issue one and hopefully get issue two done by the end of August which is in a week and then uh, yeah and then I could start drawing but then I have a lot of concept art I still have to do trying to figure out how to do this and do it well and do it fast enough because um, like I said it's newer so I'm not quite used to it and it's easy to get carried away and start like I always do I over once I've finished a section I'll go back and actually start layering it more than I need to or adding detail and just completely messing it up. Sometimes less is more. So I have to keep keep that in mind when I start to add layers of paint on and it starts to look muddy, which I, I tell people not to do, but I myself feel like I did it a few times with this piece. But you know, there's nothing that uh, jelly rolls and white paint can't fix, right? Anyways, uh, as always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. And until next time, keep creating and keep experimenting.